Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's topic, chipping versus pitching drills and three key differences between them. I'm gonna show you some strategy at the end, but I'll, I'll take you through four shots around the green fairly briefly. We won't get too bogged down on any technique, but they'll be in degree of difficulty and we'll match them to situations. And you'll see these three key differences and how they factor in and how they work up the grade. Very briefly, if you're new to the channel, perhaps you've watched the videos before, but you've never subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. It helps us build momentum. Also hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. would really appreciate that as well. So the first of our key differences is loft. If you look at this sand wedge up against the ball, look how the ball is barely resting on the bottom of the club face. Let's say more of a chipping club would be say a seven iron. Look how much more easily the ball rests up on the club face there. So adding loft adds degree of difficulty. Here's a simple little seven iron chip, not a bad outcome. So the next key difference between chipping and pitching speed, when you choose less loft, more of a chipping club, you don't need nearly the club head speed because it's going to roll out. You won't have the kind of really terrible outcomes. Picture driving your, or picture even better, teaching your kid how to drive a car. Would you rather be in the car at 80 miles an hour trying to teach them or 10 miles an hour? Obviously 10 miles an hour. So when you use less speed, when you opt for the chipping shot, you won't have nearly the kind of bad shots and disasters you will if you pitch. So let's start with what I consider to be the safest and easiest of all the shots and that's maybe what we call the putt chip. It's a chip basically but what it is I'm using the seven iron we make the club more vertical more like a putter and what this does is it lines it more up with the forearms which is a stabilizing factor. You don't have the kind of angle you'd normally have you'd have more mobility could create more speed that way but more stable this way. You'll get closer to the ball the club will rest with its heels slightly off the ground it's okay the ball comes off a little more dead Arm should be soft so you can get over it more like a putt and again grip much more up in the palms. Very, very simple and stable. Let's have a go. Just bump the ball onto the green there. That's the easiest one. We'll look at strategy at the end, but let's move to the next one. Okay, the next one I'm going with more of a normal grip down towards the fingers so there's some angle here now. What that allows me to do is to create a little bit more energy and perhaps just a little bit of play in the wrist so there's a touch more speed and I can hit the ball harder. But this is a nine iron here. It's still basically a chipping setup, feet close together, weight forward. And it's still most importantly, basically a one lever type of a shot. It's not a wristy shot per se. And it's hit, of course, with a less lofted club. So let's bump one up there here. And I can feel a little more energy in the club, a little bit more pop on the ball. So that's what I would call a brush pitch. Why do I call it that? Well, I'm not trying to trap it or squeeze down on it or anything. I'm not trying to add a lot of loft. I'm simply letting the club slide underneath the ball, but it's still a shot that has a lot of loft. This is a sand wedge, and it has a heck of a lot more speed than those chip shots do. So it does the job to give it a little bit of loft, get it on the green. Again, degree of difficulty is rising here though. Now we're gonna look at the hardest shot next, and then after that, we'll look at some strategy. Okay, our final choice here, it may not be a full-blown flop shot, but it's something fairly close to it. If I'm going to get the ball, that green's raised a good four or five feet. If I'm going to get the ball over this bunker and stop it by that pin with that green as high as it is, I need loft on the shot, so I need the most loft I can get. I'll even add some. Fortunately, I've got a good lie here. And of course, that brings into, into account the third difference between chips and pitches, especially as we move up the grade here, and that's motion. Listen, if I'm going to use enough loft to do the job here, I need a lot more body motion. I need some wrist cock. I'll even need a little bit of lower body motion through the ball. So degree of difficulty goes up, but there's no other way to play the shot. You have to have height. So let's add some loft to the club. Pop it up in the air there. Not too bad. Let's have a look at strategy. So certainly the shot we just looked at, hey, you don't have a choice there. I mean, you could potentially in a situation like that chip around the bunker or something. That's a horrible way to play the game though. You won't have any fun like that. And the straight forward a few feet off the green, well, sure enough, you could even putt that actually or, or chip it. But this is the one, this intermediate shot. I hit a shot from very close to here two segments ago. This is the one where strategy comes in a little bit more. What's the right shot for you? Well, let's talk about it. If I was Jason Day or Phil Mickelson, in other words, the odds of me 
really, really miss hitting the ball a slim indeed. Why would I want to chip a ball that would run all the way across the fairway and across this rougher grass, although that was a pretty good outcome. Why would I want to do that when I could land the ball up nearer the hole on the green where I can be much more sure about the bounce? Well, there isn't any reason. That's what I would do if I had their degree of skill and confidence. You don't have to be as good as them to do it. But for the average golfer, you have to start to factor in. When I up the risk, when I add loft, when I add motion, when I add speed, degree of difficulty goes up. Okay, sure, I get a little bit better first bounce, but is that offset in my case by the amount of miss hits and poor shots I'd get? I'd say for most players, or many players, let's say that, taking something like a seven again and just making a little chip, I didn't even hit that that well, and it still ran up there on the green, is probably your better choice. For an absolute beginner, maybe putting it is even a better choice. So think it through. Other factors could be the lie you have. If the lie is a bit of a cream puff, go ahead and pitch it a bit more. How about how nervous you are? Is it the first hole of the club championship? You're not comfortable with the people you are playing with? Don't take a high degree of risk shot. Pick the one that suits you. Pick the one that in your case gives you the best percentages. You'll be better off for it.